Hi, my name is Tony Schellink, and I'm an amateur astronomer. I'm a member of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, Halifax Centre. And this is a short video on the introduction of the use of binoculars to view objects in the night sky. We're going to cover four topics. The first is why observe the sky with binoculars, followed by what kind of binoculars should you use? Third, how should I use them? And fourth, what can I see in the night sky with these binoculars? So why binoculars? Well, if you're interested in viewing things in the night sky, RASC recommends highly that you start with binoculars, not a telescope. Now, the reason for that is you can see a lot of objects in the night sky at any given time of the year. But throughout the year, you can probably see 60 or more deep sky objects. So binoculars have a wide field of view. What that means is when you're looking in the sky, it's far easier to actually find the objects that you're looking for. So using binoculars is the best way to learn about the sky and to discover the many objects that you can see that are there. So the next question is, what kind of binoculars should you use to view the night sky? Well, the first thing is you don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, there are very good quality binoculars for sale for less than $100. And you know what? The ones you've had sitting at home for the last couple of decades may work just fine. Now the one thing is, people have a desire to buy high magnification telescopes and binoculars. We do not recommend you buy a pair of binoculars that have a magnification over 10. Why? Well, because when you're holding them and they're high magnification, any kind of wobble in your, when you're holding it will show up and the things you're looking at will disappear when you look through the binoculars. So remember, the magnification should be something either 10 or less. Now, the other thing is that uh, they should be comfortable to lift and to hold. And that again comes to the fact that you want them to be steady. And some binoculars are considerably more heavy than others. So try them out before you leave the store and see if you can hold them comfortably for a little while. And if that's the case, then buy them. If not, then go to a smaller size. There are a wide range of binoculars to choose from. These three here are pretty common. This is 10 by 50 binoculars. And what that means is that the opening here is 50 millimeters wide. So we have two of those, 50 millimeters each, and it has a magnification of 10. So we say 10 by 50s here. This pair is eight by 40, so there's an opening of 40 millimeters here. And the smallest pair here I have is seven by 35s. Normally this is about as small as I would recommend you go. So it has a magnification of seven. Now you might think, oh dear, this is a lower magnification than this one, which it is, but it has certain advantages. With lower magnification, any shakes you may have are not going to affect your viewing that much. And secondly, it has a wider field of view, so it's easier to find things. However, um, this is a, an excellent compromise. While this is going to give you a higher magnification, so you'll see things closer up, and it has larger openings, so more light is going to come in, so you may be able to see a few more things. This one, 8x40s, are relatively lightweight, uh, have good magnification, are a good compromise between these two. But as I said earlier, you want to buy the type of binocular that is easy to hold, something that you can hold up for a while, not too heavy. So how do you actually use the binoculars? Well, there's three things that you have to do. First of all, you have to adjust them for the width of your eyes. If you'll notice, they are hinged. They can go wide or narrow. And when you initially look through them, you may see two different circles, or if they're relatively close, it goes into a figure eight, the kind of thing that you see on television shows and in the movies. But that's not really what you want to see. What you want to see is a single circle. And that way, both of your eyes are aligned with the eyepieces on the binoculars. And once you see that, you know you're set up in terms of how they should be close, they should be together. The second adjustment you have to make to the binoculars is focus. Now, there are two ways to focus a pair of binoculars. The main focus is up here. In this case, is wheel. Sometimes it's a lever that goes back and forth. But most people don't realize that there's a second uh, way to focus using what's called the diopter. And 
this lens over here turns and that focuses this side. So what you want to do first is close your right eye or else block off the right side and look in the left side like this and focus on an object that's far away and then use the main focus to focus on it. And once you get that into sharp focus, then you close your left eye or cover the left side and you're going to adjust the focus on this eyepiece. So again you look through but you look at the same object and you focus carefully on it so you get it very sharp. And now what's happened is you focused it for this eye and this eye and when you look through everything should be very sharp when what you see. Now once you've done that unless someone else changes the focus you don't have to do it again all you have to do is use the main focus to look at an object like this, adjust the focus, and you're all set. The third adjustment is for those people who wear glasses. Now normally, if you're not wearing glasses, you would put the, uh, you have a, a cup here, and you would put your eye right up to that cup and push hard against it, and that sets your eyeball at the right distance from the glass in the eyepiece, and you can see everything clearly. And the reason this is raised up like this is because other people who wear glasses would want to roll that down, as we have on here, and when you put on your glasses and look through, that puts your eyeball just the right distance again from the glass in the eyepiece. So this is what you want to do if you're wearing glasses, and if you're not, you want this cup rolled up like that and look through this way. How do you actually find these objects in the sky? Well, uh, there are many star maps that are published and you can buy them at the local bookstore. There are quite a few apps that you can download for your iPad or cell phone. Monthly magazines on astronomy also generally include a map in the center which shows you what objects are in the sky and how to find them in any given month. What you do is you look at those maps carefully and you see the constellations and you sort of see where these objects are and you say okay I see some bright stars there and I know that this object is over here relative to those bright stars so when you look in the night sky you'll see those bright stars and you try to figure out where that object is roughly. Then what you do is you stare at that object there it is right up there and the trick is to then not move your head and bring the binoculars right up to your eye and when you look through you should be looking at exactly where you think the object is. Now if it's there that's great. If it's not there then well you can slowly scan the sky looking for the object and chances are you're going to find it. We're now going to take a look at what you can see in the night sky with binoculars. I said earlier that you can see a lot of objects but we'll just talk about five of them briefly here. The first one is the moon. You can see a lot of detail through binoculars. That includes craters and seas and other features. And what you should do is you should look along the terminator because that changes day by day. The terminator is where the shadow on the moon begins and that highlights a lot of the features on the moon. The next object we're going to talk about, and you can see a sketch of it here, is the Lagoon Nebula. So this is a nebula and that means it's a whole bunch of gas and dust and there are stars that are embedded in that nebula that are giving off energy that excites the gas and it gives off light and you can see it. So there's lots of nebula to find in the night sky. The next is a galaxy and this is the Andromeda galaxy and it's very large, easy to see as you can see in this diagram and in this photo. It's our largest nearest neighbor in terms of a galaxy and it's really exciting if you get a chance to see it. And then we have an open cluster and again there's lots of open clusters in the night sky. And what they are, is when a nebula has finally collapsed all of that dust and gas to form anywhere from tens to hundreds of stars. And they're all still hanging around each other. And they're all very, very new. And it's kind of cool to see them. The next one is a globular cluster. And they're very different, even though they're called a cluster. They can have half a million stars in them, and sometimes more. And they're very closely packed to each other. And they're also very, very old. This one is M22. It's about uh, 12 or more billion years old, which is quite something since the universe itself is only 13.8 billion years old. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found the information helpful and inspiring. 
and may I wish you clear skies.